Right, last one of the night. It's still Saturday, 26th of November, and uh, let's do this one, and then I can um, get ahead of myself, which would be nice. So, um, it's another donation, another Drinks by the Dram, uh, and another kind donation from James Goggin. Thank you very much, sir. Um, and it's another boutique whiskey, like the one we did last night. Um, so, this is Longmore, uh, and the Longmore distillery is here. Um, now, it's actually, Longmorn as a place um, refers to a, a church. Um, it's actually a church of somebody called St. Mark. Um, and the um, original terminology of it, so we're talking like Scottish Gaelic, it was known as Landmark, um, land meaning church of St. Mark. Um, so Landmark ended up sort of developing into Longmorn as a place name. And it was founded by a guy called John Duff, who in 1875 set up a um, distillery called Glen Lossy, which we haven't done yet, because it actually ties in with, um, even though I was doing this alphabetically, as I was doing the research for Glen Lossy, it turns out that it's actually tied to another distillery called Manicmore, which is a bit later on. So I will do Glen Lossy in a few drams time. And you'll find out why when you watch that, because you're gonna watch it, yeah? Cool. Um, so he, he set up Glen Lossy in 1875, and then 10 years later moved to South Africa with a view of opening a whiskey distillery in South Africa. And it would have been the first whiskey distillery in the country if it wasn't for the fact that the South African president at the time hated the UK, um, hated the country, didn't want any um, influence of the UK in his country, uh, and basically obstructed any plans that John Duff had to open a distillery there. So he moved to the US, again, found difficulties over there. There were distilleries operational, didn't really want anything to do with the Brits. So he ended up moving back to the UK. And in 1895, um, <clears throat> got in touch with a couple of businessmen, in 1895 opened the Longmorn Distillery, which was a, an old grain mill that was dating back to the 1600s. So um, he got confident, um, he was doing okay, he got his distillery, uh, and in 1897 opened the Benrick Distillery, which is literally just over the road, which we've covered off um, as we earlier on in this space I run. So, um, happy days, two distilleries, everything coming up roses, went back the following year, um, lost the money, lost the, the distillery, that was it. Sorry, John, it's, it's not working out for you. And it turned out that there was actually, it, it was like a conglomerate of, of firms and individuals that were kind of connected to the distillery, either supplying the distillery or being supplied by them, um, and essentially kind of banded together and went, well, no, we're gonna keep this operational. So they became known as the Longmorn Grants. Um, and it was, um, not grants as in somebody's name, it was literally kind of like, the, almost like the owners. The Longmorn owners are kind of like this this board of, of people that were running this distillery with a, um, a, a general manager whose name completely escapes me because I didn't write it down. Um, and they carried on going until 1970, so they were doing a pretty decent job of, um, of keeping this operational. Um, and eventually in 1970, it merged with um, the Glen Livett and Glen Grant Distillery Company. Um, who themselves were then um, taken over in 1978 by Shivers, uh, the Shivers brothers, um, and Shivers brothers eventually became part of Pernod Ricard in 2001, and that's who they're with now. So, um, Longmore was available as a um, single malt when I was working in the whiskey shop, um, and I can remember even in the days working at Oddbins, which was way before then, um, as a 15 year old, um, which was pretty highly regarded. It was pretty good value for money as well. Now this is a few, a few years ago, we're talking like 10, 15 years ago, but I think it was about 30 quid for the 15 year old, which was very good price even back then for a 15 year old single malt. It is now replaced with a 16 year old. Um, the 15 year old was 45%, the 16 year old was 48%, and I can't remember how much it is, I'm not gonna look it up now, but it is jumped up in price since it went from the 15 to the 16. And I've come across a few people that have said, the old long worn, Fantastic and fantastic value for money. The new Longmorn is very good, but nowhere near the value for money. But people will probably put in the comments how much the 16 year old is now, and we'll probably have something to say about the change between the 15 and 16. But I've heard a, new, a num number of people say the 16 is price wise and quality not what it used to be. So, this particular one, however, 
uh, that was from James, was Longmorn Batch 1 from the Boutique Whiskey Company. So I think they're still on Batch 1. This is what the bottle is that I can get. They're basically the same anyway. Um, it's 52% volume. There's 157 bottles in existence. Now, I couldn't find this for sale at Master of Malt. They discontinued, um, which is making me think there's now Batch 2, which I think is an age statement possibly um but i did find this having just sold um i think it was whiskey auctioneer was selling it for had sold it sorry for 85 quid at auction um so yeah not many bottles again it's a batch it's got no age statement again boutique whiskey website not particularly forthcoming in terms of what casts it's been matured and what the age is that sort of thing so i don't know however the linkwood that we had yesterday um, was phenomenal, really, really good. So I'm quite looking forward to this because generally speaking, the Boutique Whiskey Company seem to know what they're doing. They are picking some absolute crackers. So I'm hoping this is as good. Now, this is a little bit lighter than the Linkwood was. Um, it's definitely more of a kind of yellowy, white, winey color. Um, not unpleasant, but it doesn't. it's not particularly deep. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit more golden. Hmm. There's a bit of a spirit in it. 52%, so you'd expect that, but there's a there's a slight off note to this. And I've just washed the glasses out with hot water, dried them off nicely, everything like that. So I'm I'm confident it's not any residue from the, the samples I've just had. But it's quite it's quite acrid but there is a real weird note of I'm not quite sure what it is it's kind of farmy <sighs> yeah I don't know I'm not sure about this at all there's something in there the, the spiritiness is quite it's difficult to get what the other note is as well because of the, the higher alcohol percentage I, I don't want to take too deep a breath but I can't quite, I can't quite get what that weird note is. It's, it's a slight farmyardy character. It's slightly vegetal and it's just, just weird. Let's give it a go. Fortunately, it's not farmyardy on the, on the palette. It doesn't have the intensity of the linkwood, which have that higher alcohol percentage. So there is there is a bit of heat, but it's not overpowering. But there's not a great deal behind it. It's it's quite actually quite difficult to pick something up. Linkwood toffee straight away. Um, whereas this is there's a bit of a multi character to it. There's a very slight dryness as well, but it's slight. It's almost like a kind of white wine. It's like a dry white wine to it. So there is a. It really does dry your mouth out. But it's not woody. It's really unusual. It's almost like an aperitif. It's kind of got me lost for words because I really can't pick up anything. And it's not that it's flavorless. It's just what is there is not, it's not obvious what it is. It's not screaming out to me fruit or spice. Maybe there's like a dry spice to it, but everything that's coming to me is more like a dry white wine. It really is most unusual. And then there is the bite of the alcohol, but what's behind the alcohol is, is really difficult to pick up. And it's not that it's featureless, it's just a bit... lost for words because I, I can't <laughs> I can't really articulate what the flavors are that I'm getting because I don't really know what I'm getting 
It's certainly not fruity, it's not rich, it's not like obviously sherry or bourbon cask or anything like that. It's quite drying. Nutty, maybe, maybe, no, not quite almondy. It's not even that. That implies almost a sweetness to it, which isn't really there. It really is like a dry white wine, like a dry Sauvignon Blanc that's quite sharp and has a grapiness to it and dries your mouth out, but at a higher alcohol percentage. I'm gonna add some water just to see if I can get anything else out of it because this has com me completely stumped um, in terms of being able to kind of describe to you what it tastes like. Because without me saying Sauvignon Blanc again, I, I've got nothing else. I really do have nothing else at all. <laughs> I've just added water to it, and if anything, that's made it even more whiny. That on the nose, now that I've had water to that, that on the nose is total white wine. A really, really dry Sauvignon Blanc wine, just with a higher alcohol percentage. It, it really is. Oh, I'm getting something else. Mm, kind of like a rubber texture. Like a, yeah, kind of a rubbery, um, like rubber tires, burnt rubber tires, but not, not an acrid burnt rubber tires. It's just kind of that sensation of, I don't know, almost like being in a, something like a quick fit or ATS that do all these, these tire places and you get that element not as intense as walking into one of those places and taking a big old sniff but kind of like there's one a bit down the road and you get that, that waft of rubber that sort of yeah that's pretty much it that's as close as I think I'm going to get and to be honest, to be honest adding the water has done done no favours to it at all. It's taken what flavour was there, its wine character, and just reduced it down even more. I can't I cannot pick anything out of this. I really can't, apart from wine and alcohol. It it's a it's a very unwhisky whiskey. It really is. It's unusual. It's not unpleasant, it's just it it doesn't fill me with any 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 joy, any passion. I don't feel like I'm drinking whiskey. I feel like I'm just drinking a, a spirit of some sort. Some kind of, um, like a local spirit that's made with white wine grapes. Uh, it, it's just a, a very un-Scotch whiskey. In fact, there was even less on that final um, nip. It, it was just not a lot with then some heat from alcohol what a strange whiskey that i wouldn't i wouldn't have even called a whiskey i, I think if i'd have if i'd have, what, if i'd have tried that blind i don't even know what i would have you know where i would have said it's from or even if it was whiskey if it was some kind of other spirit but then i wouldn't have even been able to say oh you know it's a vodka or it's a rum it's a white rum or something like that it uh, possibly possibly a white rum that's not very good but i don't even know if i'd have said it was a whiskey if i'd have tried it blind really odd really odd and a bit disappointing because the boutique whiskey company so far the ones that i've had have generally been pretty fantastic and that is strange and i don't remember longmore being like that because i can remember having the 15 year old i know i've had it before and i know i was really impressed with it and i seem to remember it was pretty heavily sherried or it was obviously sherried, but it was quite rich and there was a lot of depth to it. And this this is a completely different beast to anything with depth and richness and complexity. This is this is weird. Weird. Do I like it? I'm, I don't, it's not like I don't like it. I don't know how I feel about it. It's a very, very strange whiskey. Very odd. Interesting though, which is always a good thing. Um, but yeah, not a great advert for Longmore. I think I think it, you know the official bottling is is a better representation of it. Obviously, right. That's me done for the night. I'm going to go to bed. I'm tired. No, I'm not. I'm going to edit my first one and upload it. I shall see you at the next one. Cheers. <laughs>